Good morning, you all. We're, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warm us up and get us in. Uh, Chris is coming. I just know it. He's around here somewhere. I just know it. Um, listen, a couple of announcements. We just have a couple of corrections to the bulletin that you'll find online or in your hands today. But I'm really grateful that we'll close out the research focus group this today at 2.30. Um, we'll be meeting in Chapel Parlor again. The Austin Avenue door will be open, and so will the Franklin door. Um, there is a, a mistake on Sunday the 4th. We have real spirituality listed on a Sunday, and it's just not. It's on a Friday. So real spirituality will meet on a August 2nd. I can't believe it's August. At six o'clock, they'll be reviewing the movie *The Local Hero*, and just want to commend that to you. It's at Pinewood, uh, but you'll see lots of familiar faces there. The second to last page of your bulletin is full of announcements and information about upcoming opportunities, and we want to commend those to you. Um, just to note that Wednesday evening, Amy's been running a really wonderful bell clinic. It's a great chance. Regardless of your age, families could come to get your hands on bells and learn a little bit of the fundamentals. Um, and uh, Amy is not going to tie you to anything. It's just uh, coming to be exposed to that. You'll note that the choir returns to their rehearsals on August 7. Uh, we've had innovative offerings every Sunday of the summer from uh, solos to ensembles. And today, you'll be able to hear your very own First Prez boys band, coined by Chuck Weaver, who now has his head down, as he should. Um, so please uh, take in those events and know that, uh, know that we're busy um, trying to create opportunities that are meaningful for you all. So with that, we want to ready our hearts and minds to really attend to the prayer list that we have. And it's significant this week, so I'll just grab my notes as I make my way to the font. John Baker is doing his work in hospice care, uh, and it's significant for him. He and um, Sue appreciate your thoughts and prayers. Eleanor Goodman, come on in here. See, I knew he'd show up. <laughs> Um, Eleanor Goodman uh, has really been quite ill, and it's been a week, and her mom Amy is here, but our thoughts and prayer, almost two weeks. So just really high fevers, a lot of lethargy, and uh, really uh, significant for the family. Uh, we want to be remembering Don Harris, who has procedures coming up this week, and Sue Patrick, who's scheduled for surgery in September. Cynthia Perry, Claire Grant, David Gray, and Jane Kirk all did their check-in to a hospital and have checked out. So, you know, the season is really pretty rugged. And next week, when we serve communion, we want to announce that the distribution of the elements will be a little different in light of how rugged the season is. We'll still have servers up front. You'll still process. The di you'll still take a cup, but the difference will be that in addition to broken gluten-free option, you will have cubed bread that will be served to you with really small tongs, um, and we're just increasing the distance between skin to skin and that sort of thing. We're really doing our best. We want to remind you, this is a place where there is no shame if you wear a mask. Um, we're going to be taking them off and putting them back on. So do what's good for your immune system. Um, you all are really important parts of this community, and we're working to stay pretty responsive as we go forward. Um, I know that you come with important circumstances and people in your mind and heart. We come to this font really to lean into it, to remember the strength of a baptism that flows or trickles, either one. And we welcome one another as we pour the water, saying together, welcome home, children of God.
Friends, I'll invite you to rise in body or in spirit. This is the day drawn together from various realities that our Creator has made. This is the day into which Christ invites us that we may offer our vitality for the sake of life around us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Thanks, you may be seated. We engage the age-old discipline of confession that we may take space to find courage and resolve to square up with ourselves, with our neighbor, with God, that we may move forward reasonably unencumbered. With one voice, wherever we are, let us pray together. God of passionate intensity, we confess our transgressions in loyalties that go unchecked. We confess loyalties to family, nation, and even you, O oh Lord, that lack relevance or accuracy. How we long to cultivate growing by pruning what no longer has life. May new branches of loyalty grow. May our loyalty provide appropriate shade, rest, and shelter, hinting that your kingdom is near. Through Christ we pray. Amen.
Grace, redemption, mercy, these good gifts, they fill up the cup of our life and quench a deep thirst. We share the peace which passes understanding with each other every Sunday so that we, be, we can be queued up to share it in right ways all week long. Take a minute and share this peace of Christ with one another now. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ to everyone. Peace of Christ to you. Peace of Christ. So inviting those children to come forward with us for the spirit box, we'll sing them. Evie's going to help us sing them forward. Ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Fist bump. <laughs> Christ before come on, y'all. Hey, take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Christ be beside me. Christ within me. Christ in the face of those who Y'all, you can be seated. I just want to give a big shout out to Becky Lou. It's the best way to get up to children's on, on the back of your mom, Arthur. That's awesome. Um, can I ask for a volunteer? Who wants to be the uh, keeper of the microphone this morning? This is a big job. Oh, you're, if, there's a rule. Our rule is that if you volunteer someone else, you volunteer yourself. Okay? Ooh, that changes it. Hannah, Hannah, so here's the deal. Let me explain what this is before I give this to you. So this means that when somebody raises their hand like they want to speak, is that you need to take and give them the mic. Can you do that for me? All right, I'm going to ask one more time. Does anybody want to be a volunteer to be the keep? You don't have to talk. You just need to give it to someone if they would like to talk. Great. Thank you, Yaya. Okay. Friends, does anybody remember, and it was in the bulletin, so you don't even know what I was going to ask yet. Does anybody remember what's the, what is the movie that we watched for today? What was it? Nope, that was last week. What's it was this one week? of the movies, though, too, definitely. It was. Yeah. All right, all right. Wait, hold on, we're going to practice. You need the microphone. Inside Out, too. Inside Out. Oh, my gosh, I knew it. And so I have some friends that I brought with me that I want us to share. Congregation, how many of you have seen Inside Out? Okay, this is the largest proportion we've had the entire series. I think they this know, is, yeah. This think... is a great movie. Okay, so I have some friends with me. And what I want to, who, can, who, can, who remembers what happens in Inside Out? Inside Out is all about what? All right, we need the microphone to JJ. Inside Out was basically all about what was happening inside her brain. Inside our brains. Riley's and brain, yeah. What's happening inside your brain, JJ? What are the different voices? That sounds kind of like a weird question. There's basically like four voices. Four voices, and who are they? Mr. Goodman, here, let's pass the mic on. Happy, sad, mad, disgusted, and... Uh, okay, scared. okay. Scared. We've got a couple of those. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, you want to fill them out? You had your hand raised. Do you want to offer any other one? You're good. Okay. 
Well, you forget, well, if you remember, you can always say it then. And so here's the coolest thing about the movie Inside Out. Is that, do we, do we tend to like it when we feel sad? Sometimes? When do you like to feel sad, JJ? I like to feel sad when it's like in Hold a that mic real close on your chin. I like to feel sad when it's like in a book and I like the part of it. It's oh, cool. me too, bud. Me too. Yeah. When you get to that one part in the novel that really jerks with your heartstrings. Yep. I'm a four on the Enneagram, and so feels are just like currency. Um, what else? Does anybody else here like to feel sad? Who likes to feel fear? That's another one of them. No? So here's the cool thing about the movie Inside Out, is that by the end of the movie, we are taught that every one of the emotions, every one of the feelings that she, does anybody remember her name? No. Riley. Who's Riley. Riley. Mm -hmm. That every one of the emotions that Riley feels with, that somehow we can use each and every one of those emotions to love people. We can use each and every one of those emotions to love people. And so what I did, we, what's up, how JJ? Do, how do we how do we use disgust? This is a good question. And so here's the deal. So I have brought some of my friends from the movie with me today in the spirit box. And I'm going to ask, we're going to ask these questions. And so what I want you to do is can you teach the congregation who each one of these characters are? Okay? When I pull them out. No, don't cheat. All right. Who is this? Looks pretty sad, huh? How do you think we use sadness to love people? She kind of looks pretty hip. What do you think, Evie? How can we use sadness to love people? Can we give her the microphone? Okay, okay. How else? Hannah, how do you think? Pick up that mic, babe. Yeah, pick up that mic, Hannah, so everyone can hear you. When someone dies, you can feel sad about it. Yeah, and so sometimes when we love people with our sadness, sometimes we call it kindness. Maybe sometimes we call it, this is the big adult word, sometimes we call it empathy. Can you say that with me? Say, you were going to say that? Say that word with me. Empathy. 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 When our sadness allows us to love other people. Okay, who's this? Anger. Oh, anger. How many of you guys ever feel angry? Oh, yeah. yeah, me too sometimes. How do we love people with our anger? How do we love people with our anger? All right, we need the microphone. Jacob, what do you think? Forgiveness. Oh, so sometimes we let go of our anger, for sure. JJ, did you want to say something? Uh, like when you're angry while you're basically saying something nice to somebody. So sometimes you can like, we call that forbearance JJ. sometimes. That's the big adult word. Where we JJ put away and, our anger. JJ and J um, your dad's name is Jeremy. Your name is not Jeremy. It's Jacob. Your name is Jacob. JJ and Jacob are making me think about anger helps us take action. Yeah. Yeah, it makes us, gets us all fueled up. Yeah, yeah. and so sometimes when we love, yeah, yeah, were you going to say something? Your hand was up. Yeah. So sometimes when we love people with our anger, we call it justice. Mm -hmm. We call it justice. Sometimes there's a lot of good reasons that we're angry. And when we love people with our anger, we call it justice. And then this is an easy, well, maybe, and what is this one? That was not the reaction I was expecting to fear. fear. <laughs> Why did you give us that reaction? Wait, let's give the microphone over. Why did you give a big hip hip hooray for fear? Because he keeps you safe. Because he, oh my gosh, Goodman, you literally took the word right off the back of yep. my paper. <laughs> that fear can keep us safe sometimes. And so here's the lovely thing, y'all, is we're going to close with this. I have one other thing that I brought in the spirit box, is that, in the scripture that we are going to read today, God talks to a young, young boy named Jeremiah. And he says, before you were even fully formed, I knew you. And I think in some ways that is the message of the movie Inside Out, is that there is no part of us, there is no thing, there's nothing that we can feel that God cannot use for us to love people. I think that is the message of Inside Out. But so here's what I want to do. Who knows what these are? Expo markers. Okay, I need one Expo marker here. 
one expo marker here, and we're going to share them. And I brought something with me. Oh. What does that say? Can someone read that for me? Before I formed you, I knew you, God. And so, every time, I want you to look at your reflection in that mirror, and I want you to know that every time God looks at you, just like you're looking at yourself now, that there is nothing that you can be that God cannot love. Nothing that you can be that God cannot love. And so here's what I want you to do, is I want you, and parents, if we're a little too young for this, I'm going to invite you to do it on behalf of your kiddo, is I want you to just sign your name right under that quote. Can you do that for me? All right, where are our markers at? Yeah, yeah, you've got one. Go for it. JJ, can you sign your name? <laughs> and you can even write your name as big as you want. You guys are being so polite and giving so much space. <laughs> nice job, babe. There you go, Hannah. Write it real big. Just like that. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yaya, you want to get in on this? I'm going to lead us in our prayer while people are signing their name. This is wonderful. Keep, here comes Miles. Someone might help Miles sign his name. Miles, I'll bring this down to you, friend. God be, you ready to start it? Come on up, Hannah. Let's start it. Come on, McKinney. Let's go. God be in my head. God be in my heart. God be on my left. God be on my right. God be beneath me. God be above me. God be in the faces of all who love me. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Miss Amy. Um, Miss Amy's pitch hitting for us today. Did we get Miles? I think we got, we got a Miles. Arthur? I'm going to sign for Arthur. Do we want a Finley? And, yeah. Do you want a Finley? Go for it. Yeah, let's do it. Here, I'm going to hold time. this just so it's... I love it. Perfect. Amazing. Yep. Friends, as we approach God's word through the prophet Jeremiah, I'll invite you to pray with me. Oh God, if even for just a moment, I ask that you might silence the voices within us so that we might hear you and you alone. That you might, in these words, rekindle us. That you might bring us to life again. Amen. Uh, words from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 1, 17 through 19. She'd say God's words to Jeremiah. But you, Jeremiah, will gird up your loins. Stand up and tell them everything that I command you. Do not break down before them, for I will break you down before them. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, for you are an iron pillar and a bronze wall against the whole land and of the people, against the kings of Judah, its princes, its priests, and the people of the land. For they will, for they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.
Let's say this morning a continuation of the gospel. I invite you to rise up in body or in spirit. Matthew 24, verses 4 through 13. Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they'll lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And also many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the, this is Christ, this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. to the Father and to Thank you. You may be seated. Everyone except Chris. We're going to review this last movie Let's do it. together. Yeah. Um, the last movie in the series, uh, Letters from Iwo Jima, a 2006 movie directed by Clint Eastwood. It was back to back with uh, another movie entitled Flags of Our Fathers. And um, Letters from Iwo Jima is entirely in Japanese, except for a few uh, exchanges in English. Um, and so what did you think of the film, Chris? It was a oh, profit loss at the it, box office. It was, oh, it was, it took endurance to watch it, I think, mm -hmm. Leslie. It was, um, you know, it, I think any World War II movie is going to be a challenge to watch, just mm -hmm. because of you know, any movie that does the violence justice, it's going to be a lot to endure, even yeah. just watching it. Right. Um, and yet there was something really beautiful about it. Um, I think I was, I was shocked reading, uh, hearing you read the gospel, because that in some ways it really does feel like that kind of apocalyptic, that apocalyptic moment in a lot of ways for the Japanese people. Um, yeah, definitely a sort of scorched earth campaign, uh, uh, a lot of desolation in the imagery of the land itself, and then the movie takes you to the interior landscape of the men, which is yeah. really rich with a lot of memory um, and reflection, so there's a lot of strong contrasts, I think, in the movie. Yeah, um, absolutely. Siago, Siago, mm -hmm. the main character is a conscripted baker. Um, <laughs> who, you know, talks to his wife's pregnant belly and says, don't worry, little baby, I'll be back. And, and uh, his wife is terrified that he's completely unable and is not going to make it back alive. So, you know, he's sort of the unlikely victor. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think one, another interesting tension in the movie is um, so much of it revolves around Western culture and Eastern culture and kind of Western industrialism, America is this country that kind of has such a powerhouse and ability to kind of produce arms and, and things that the Japanese don't feel like they can, and yet the Japanese kind of have this honor system, which is, seems to be another way that they themselves are kind of um, built up in a certain way. Yeah, history says that the Americans expected to take the island of Iwo Jima in five days, and it took them 36. Um, the major, whose name is, yeah. His name is Ken Watanbe in real life. Yeah, that's the character. I'm t I've totally messed Chris up. Chris had the pronunciation <laughs> at our first service. 
but Kiribashi. Yes. Thank Kiribashi, you. the major Kiribashi, runs a defensive depth, which means that he uh, spreads out his, um, his men uh, in order to fatigue uh, the assault of the Americans and extends that, yeah. that time it took to conquer. He's really brilliant. He's uh -huh. brilliant. And he's also, you know, so much of the, one of the scenes, as you know, that really struck me in this movie was uh, the scene where he kind of has this sense that the Japanese will be defeated. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this amazing scene in a village where all of these men are marching through and kind of going out to defend the island. Um, and Japanese men. The Japanese yeah. men. And mm -hmm. he just looks down at this little child that is uh, playing in the dirt um, and kind of making as if there were like tanks of their own. Um, and there's just kind of this inner dialogue that he has. Uh, and you really get the sense of the honor and kind of stoicism that it takes to feel like your chances of success are very small yeah. and yet to march out into battle nevertheless. And did you yeah. say in the first service that when he saw that young child, he, it took him back to memories of being in America? The American roadways and that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, where he's kind of, he sees how America has just all of these cars, even in back home in the continental U.S., that people just drive cars in ways that, the Japanese didn't, yeah. and that leads him to think that, oh my gosh, their technology is just in some ways more advanced, mm -hmm. and yet there is something about the spirit that these people carry that is just so to their credit. Yeah, um, it's really yeah. beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything we didn't mention from the first? Uh, what would you give it out of ten? Oh, I I like it. Um, I like it a lot. I, I think on the effort. It's not a box office sensation. People didn't like it too much. But I think on the effort of doing two movies from two different perspectives, it has to be beyond a 10 for me. Beyond I a think 10. it's a really yeah. interesting directing uh, endeavor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so much, I think about post 9-11 and how America itself was wrestling with this question of of communities that we were tending to other other eyes in that moment mm -hmm. and how f so much of that during World War II was the Japanese people yeah. and I felt like this movie really humanized it kind of had this beautiful way of humanizing yeah. all sides of a conflict yeah um, and so I would I would also rank it highly yeah it was lovely that, did you just avoid giving it a sorry I did, yeah. didn't um, I give I give it a nine all right I give it yeah. a nine yeah that was great I uh, thought you were trying to be nice and not Ah, it's really good. All right. Okay. <laughs> the movie, like the gospel, intends to give a seat to the importance of battlefield. And we certainly have talked about the battlefield in the Christian perspective. We certainly have imagined ourselves as Christian armies or conquering for Christ. We've imagined all sorts of spiritual warfare, but the movie sets it up differently. Um, the opening scene is of Japanese men digging trenches as if to cue you and I that this movie is going to go deep. And it does. It goes deep, not for the sake of entrenching us, but for the sake of showing us about a freedom. And ironically, battleground is an important component to the freedom. The movie alternates between the intensity of warfare and the art of the written letter. In fact, uh, Major Kirby Kirbyashi, are you going to understand me as I fumble? Kirbyashi is that he becomes known in a book that is uh, written about him entitled uh, Picture Letters from the Commander-in-Chief. And this major, within the caves of the island of Iwo Jima, writes letters back to his family. It's battlefield correspondence to the beloved. 
which is maybe the first kind of battlefield correspondence you and I get to know. The way we tell the people we love the hardships that we're going through. We began this movie series with 12 Years a Slave, and in that movie, Reflection, we noted the ways in which civilization becomes uncivilized. This movie shows a really important way that human beings actually retain their civility. And they demonstrate it through correspondence, the written word, but also the intellectual correspondence that you and I engage with our memories. Both significant Japanese leader, the major, and the lieutenant colonel, Baron Nishi, are both understood to be American sympathizers. And you and I have the privilege in watching the movie, in listening to the Japanese, to understand the political rhetoric on their side of the war. Americans are savage and heartless, you know. And these two leaders are questioned, there's insubordination, there's resistance to them because of their sympathies. And their sympathies come because they have spent time in the soil of another country. In one strong scene, the major, Kiribashi, sits across the table in an act of diplomacy from Americans. And a rather bold wife of an American military commander leans across the table and says, if Japan and America ever went to war, what would you do? To which Kiribashi says, Kiribashi says, I would do my duty. I would do my duty. I mean, this is really the importance of our hardship, our difficulty. It's really the importance of warning texts like Matthew 24, Jeremiah 1. The call that is upon you to live this life is not an easy one. It is difficult. Gird up your loins and get ready. Beware. People will draw you to promises messianic sort of promises. This will give you the good life. This will provide a solution. Matthew 24 says, beware of such simple offerings. You yourself must discern. You yourself must know. The suffering that you go through is the beginning of new understanding and new life. Battlefield correspondence is an essential, I submit, to our spiritual growth. And the first kind we do is to the people we love the most. But then we stretch out our correspondence a little bit. <laughs> I think another type of battlefield correspondence goes straight to God, to our understanding of God. Not only do we confess to those we love the sufferings we go to, but we puzzle with the one that we understand has some care and interest in us about why in the world we go through this. What is the meaning and the purpose in the suffering? And it is the correspondence that works it out. It is the intent to gird up our loins and be in dialogue. That quote from Matthew 24 is only ever also found in Job. And as we correspond on the question, why is it that I go through this? We begin to experience illumination that can only be ours. One of the striking parts of the movie is an examination of the Japanese honor of suicide, the honorable death of suicide. And in the movie, there is the bonsai call to suicide. There is one tremendous scene in which men are called through that bonsai yell. And one by one, they take the grenade and they unpin it and they slam it to their helmet and they hold it to their heart, and they explode. 
as if to impress upon you and I the ways in which human beings can self-destruct on the question of purpose, on the question of meaning, it is the ultimate demanding correspondence. Some say it takes our whole life to write it out, to muse it out through our memories. These American sympathizer, Japanese military leaders are not so sure about the bonsai call. Let me close with, I think, what is the most important piece of battlefield correspondence that you and I can do. It is of the highest order. And it gives you a sort of rank if you get there. It is the military correspondence with the enemy. It is, I think, what the movie is all about because these two Japanese leaders host their enemies in their memory. And they are, throughout the movie, corresponding with them. There is something about animosity <laughs> that stays with us our whole life. I don't know about your life, but in mine, if I get rid of one enemy, another one pops right up because they are functional, they are purposeful. You and I are told to love God's self and the enemy. And there is something the enemy does for us that tempers every victory we will have in this life. You see, when you and I engage the battlefield of our life and seek to win and conquer and raise the proverbial flag of our selfhood, we are at tremendous risk to become an oppressor in the game of life. It's a tremendous risk. And it is only when we can correspond with the enemy, the animosity of circumstance or person to be able to say I remember you my enemy in a better day I see you my enemy in your purpose these things temper us we can still be victors but we are somehow in important ways tempered from being oppressors. Power is managed in the battleground correspondence with that with whom we hold great animosity. I know what Chris neglected to remember to you and to me, which is that Major Kiribashi I've now probably entirely rewritten his name. You understand that, don't you? Um, Major Kiribashi, in the end of the movie, claims the bonsai call that he questioned. And he, he has, um, at his aid, the weapon given to him by his friends, the Americans, who become his enemies who become his friends in securing an honorable death with the beautiful revolver. You see, it's all, it's all tangled up. It's all true, and it's all worth wondering about. You see, we Christians have disabled ourselves on the matter of love a little bit by skipping the importance of the battlefield. Love sometimes gets too saccharine, too romanticized. <laughs> One of the best ways we love each other is to do good 
battle. Not all territories deserve to be held. Not all principles deserve to win. And it is human beings that battle that out. Battle has a spiritual purpose within the human community and the religious life. So we must. We must correspond on the battlefield with those we love, with the divine creator whom we struggle to imagine well. And perhaps most of all, with the enemy whom we both fear and have some awe of. Amen. We're going to finish out this um, sermon series with this funky little affirmation of faith we've written for the, for the movie series. I invite you to rise up in body or in spirit <clears throat> and join with one voice. We affirm God, John Calvin's imaginative concept of all the world as God's theater. What we share in our part of the theater can be powerful. We affirm Jesus' arrival to center stage to reinvigorate the religious life he so honored. We affirm Jesus' potent directing presence among us that gave rise to recognizing him as Christ. We affirm the Holy Spirit's responsive cueing of our actions towards Christ's teachings and observations. We affirm the Creator God who continues to arrive with applause and awe encouraging all of creation. We affirm the power and importance of our own creative efforts and their impact, whether through theater, film, or virtual spaces. We affirm our commitment to stewarding the creation that emanates from us and our communities. Thank you, you may be seated, and we want to invite, our, uh, there you are, you may be seated. Friends, having heard the word proclaimed and having affirmed what it is that we believe, we respond with generosity and with open hearts. And so I'll invite our ushers forward to receive our morning tithes and offerings.
I neglected to mention Marla Janes in the prayers. She came in the office this week to think about how she could give her gifts. And she said, thanks for adding me to the prayer list. I've got a lot of things I'm managing. It's better that I give some of my gifts right now because things might get more complicated for me. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is perhaps not too simple to say that all of life is a game. And when it comes to your people, our prayer is that the games would be Olympic, that there would be a sufficiency of training and discipline, that there would be a readiness, that there would be a sufficiency of sportsmanship, of international collegiance, that there would, in the diplomacy, be an inspiration to the crowd so that the crowds might rise to their daily challenges with renewed vigor, discipline, sportsmanship themselves, wondering in their hearts who sets these athletes in motion. That we may run a race and run it well, we offer the prayer that was set in motion so long ago, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, just two invitations as you leave. The first is that please stick around and join us for Coffee Fellowship. The Weaver family has provided bountifully for us, and you are invited. The second invitation is linger for a moment. Maybe come forward and sign this mirror, and as you look at your own reflection, to see yourself and to know the one that God has made and called good. Hear this, hear this charge. Go out into the world in peace. Be people of hope, people of courage. Render no one evil for evil, but always safeguard the helpless. Pick up those that life has brought low. Bring close those who feel marginalized, those who feel outcast. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing forever in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Amen.